Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Appreciate you being here. I got something interesting for you today. So everybody knows lightning is cool and when you get a storm, it's a little cloudy. We're not stormy, but it's a little cloudy. When you get a storm, it's cool to see lightning, to film it, to try to take pictures of it. It's really cool stuff. The problem is if lightning hits this, I'm in trouble because it's gonna blow out all the electronics and modern tractors, just like modern cars, just like modern sawmills, well, once those electronics go, stuff doesn't work. In fact, even right now, my rear PTO is not working. And I suspect I probably have one of these guys in here is probably bad and he needs to get replaced. I've actually had to fix that already once. In any case, you know... A lot of people have never heard of the Carrington event. It happened in 1859. It was actually a massive, called a coronal mass ejection or CME. It's like a monster solar flare. And it was aimed right at the earth, hit the earth, burned telegraph wires, all kinds of crazy stuff. In fact, it induced so much power that telegraph operators who figured it out early enough realized if they disconnected their batteries, it wouldn't blow their batteries up because they were hearing about batteries getting blown up already. They disconnected their batteries to protect the batteries. Well, what was interesting about that is that then they found they could actually send telegraph messages to each other without any power source in the system because the, the electromagnetic pulse, the power that was provided by the, the sun's massive coronal mass ejection or solar flare, they're kind of the same thing, they're similar, was so much that it provided enough power on the telegraph lines, they could transmit back and forth. It was insane. Well, if that were to happen today, big problems, folks. Electronics is gonna crash and burn. However, you can protect your equipment from EMPs, big solar flares, CMEs, whatever. You can protect them from even, God forbid, if you know some crazy person lights off a bomb in the atmosphere, Nuclear bombs can do that, emit massive EMP. I'm not worried about that happening. But if lightning happens, guess what? These crazy devices can actually protect you from lightning. And they're called an EMP shield. The company's EMP shield. This is the 12-volt model that is for tractors and sawmills and anything that runs on 12 volts. Even my generator over there is going to get one of these guys. And not only can they protect you from lightning, and they do this actually by sensing the voltage across the battery terminals, and if the voltage is too high for the battery, so you've got above like 15 volts, 14.8 or whatever it's supposed to be, then it will redirect the power into the frame. So you, you take that green wire right there, you run it into a ground, and it just, it, all it does, it's a, it's a switch, and all it does is it keeps kicking that power over to the frame, which is your ground. And in this case, with a bucket on the ground, it's going to go right to the ground. And once the power dissipates, then the system's available for use again. Now, of course, lightning hits this thing close enough, it's going to blow that up. It's just going to completely blow it up. However, what they found is that if those get blown up by lightning, they generally protect the equipment that you're trying to protect with them. Now, here's the interesting thing. If they don't, right? Because everybody's going to say, yeah, but if lightning blows up your tractor, you're done. The tractor's toast and you're SOL. <laughs> However, EMP Shield guarantees their product with a $25,000 guarantee. So if your tractor gets hit by lightning and the EMP Shield doesn't protect it, they will warranty it up to $25,000 to repair your tractor. That's a heck of a deal. Now this tractor cost me 20 grand and it might cost me 25 or 30 now, but $25,000 is more than enough to replace all the electronics in the tractor so I can get it back running again. It's an awesome deal. I think they're fantastic. Now full disclosure, though I did buy this device. I've paid for all my own EMP devices. I do have an affiliate program. So like a lot of YouTubers, you know the drill. I get a small kickback if you buy one. However, here's the deal. If you decide to get one, you get $50 off the price. Now these are running, last I checked at $389. That's kind of spendy, right? You get $50 off and if they're having a sale, which they do, it stacks on that. So you get the sale price plus you get the $50 off. So it's a pretty good deal. So rather than tell you how cool this device is, I'm gonna install it. Now I will tell you, 
that I tried to figure out where I was going to put it to begin with. And my original plan was to put it down here so it's in front of the battery on this little tray here. And I was thinking I might have to zip tie it in even though it's got Velcro on the bottom and it's really strong. I've used it on my Jeep and my truck. It's, it works good. But unfortunately it won't fit there and it would interfere with the hood closing. So I won't be able to do that. What I am going to do is I'm going to Velcro it to this plate. And I don't have my drill bits with me so we're going to Velcro it right onto that plate right there. And then hopefully it doesn't come off before I get back out here with some drill bits, drill some holes so I can put some screws in it to hold it down in place. I've done it with uh, on uh, batteries before, but this battery is, is a little bit kind of different the way it's, it's just not very big up top and it's not flat. This is a nice flat surface. So hopefully it's not too cold and I'll be able to mount it there and it won't fall off while I'm out running around in my tractor. If it does, I'll have to figure out another spot to mount it. I do have some big zip ties temporarily if the velcro doesn't work i can zip tie it to the tractor and that'll hold it until i can drill some holes because right now i don't have any drill bits here because if you've watched any of my videos you know i cleaned out everything from the cabin and i took it home because i said this is a mess and i'm gonna bring the tools i need the next time i go to the cabin well i also said if i didn't bring them i'd just enjoy the weekend at the cabin so guess what <laughs> we're going to do what we can here and then we might just be enjoying the weekend but i do have some milling to do so i'll bring that to you too so without further ado i'm going to get this thing installed and you can see how silly and simple it is the stuff is a pretty strong glue that's on this thing so i am hopeful that that is going to hold well I just wish there were some holes right here that I could just run some zap straps right around it. And there may... Well, there aren't. There's no way to do that. Okay. Right now, we need a ground. Oh, you know what? I have a ground right here. I am going to have to zip tie. I will have to zip tie these wires up too. Hopefully you guys can hear me. I don't have my mic on. That one, stick that right on there. That should work as a good ground, we'll find out. I just saw something that I think might actually help prevent that from flopping around. And it's kind of crazy, but I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zap strap those wires over there onto that upright because I don't put the sides on the tractor anymore on the engine compartment because that just encourages the rats and the mice to get in here. So rather than offer to give them a nice place to hang out, I don't put the sides on. That way they think that the hawks and things are going to come get them. All right, there we go. It's super simple. These things are so easy to set up. It's crazy. The hardest part is trying to figure out where to run all your wires afterwards and uh, where to mount it that's uh, honestly that's been my my biggest challenge they do want these wires to remain the same size and they do not want you to cut them so one video i had said that i was thinking of cutting them making them shorter and then i talked to them oh great that one's gonna be tight huh oh. now they do have a fuse i think it's a 10 amp fuse see the light go on all right there we go so now what i'm going to do is take these and zip dip silos right there yep lights on working so what i'm going to do here is cheat and just take this for now until i can come up with a better system like everything i do that's one thing i have to admit that have a tendency to say I'm gonna go like this for now and if I can find some snippers that'll work fine it's not the best way to do it but for now I'll have to clean those up but out here in the middle of nowhere right now I'll cut that off and then oh sweet Tim has something I can use look at that <laughs> all right folks well that didn't take very long now I'll be honest I need to clean this up. We're out here in freezing weather and I don't have everything I need. This does seem to be solidly glued on here now, which is kind of nice, but 
my thought is I can drill some holes in here to anchor that better. I had tried to do it over here, but it sticks up too high. I need a longer bolt to go through here. So I'll probably bolt it right here. And then these, I'll need to kind of clean those up in the future and come up with a little better system. But at least for now, if this did come off, it would be held by that right there so I could catch it in time. So for now, I'm gonna go ahead and leave it and we're gonna just find out how well that works. But it's super easy to install. And you know what? I'm pretty happy with that because that's an insurance that I otherwise wouldn't have. And I've had trouble with, with uh, lightning before. I've actually had friends that have cabins in the woods that had their entire systems blown up by lightning. And lightning arresters, they had some lightning arresters. It saved part of their equipment, but not all of it. So I've still got to install EMP for EMP shields for my solar panel setup, for my generator, and for my pump back there. So when I get those done, I'll bring that to you. I'm kind of doing it one at a time when I have time, but I gotta get to milling today. So folks, that being said, I'll drop another video right here for you guys to check out. Appreciate you watching. I gotta get to work. The old jar head out.